welcome back to the channel folks today i'm going to be talking about edible food sources and i'm not going to be talking about your food plots we can cover that in another video i'm going to be talking about all the edible fruits acorns or acorns if you're from the south so a lot of people when they cover these videos they go over a majority of your oak species they talk about white oaks they talk about red oaks but they leave a lot of different trees out of the list that I think should be mentioned. So some of those trees I'm going to be talking about include honey locust, Osage orange, beech trees, persimmon trees, and a couple others. So I'm going to start by talking about this giant oak tree behind me. This is a white oak. It's, it's actually called a bur oak and it's very easy to identify by either the leaves or the ac acorns or acorns depending on where you're from. Uh, it actually has a large husk that'll cover a majority of the acorn, about three-fourths of the acorn, and I'll show you some of the acorns I have some saved from last year. The leaves of a white oak are pretty easy to identify. They're going to have smooth lobes, and the bur oak is pretty easy to tell from a lot of the other white oaks just because uh, how massive the leaves are, and also it's got a lot of um, merged lobes that kind of come together and it's just easy to tell and I'll show you some examples of some other white oaks um, here in just a second but talking about white and red oaks so it's pretty common for your white oaks to produce every year however uh, some of them produce better every third year uh, as opposed to every single year so for example, this bur oak behind me, it dropped a lot of acorns last year, picked up a lot to save to plant uh, this spring. And uh, just looking around the ground, I don't see nearly as many acorns as I did last year. So I would say in, in a couple of years, it'll produce again really heavily. Now your red oaks are a little bit different. They have a 24 months maturity date. So uh, they produce every other year. However, I've noticed there's quite a few red oaks that uh, tend to produce almost every year, like some pin oaks, uh, shingle oaks. Those drop acorns almost every year that I try to look for them. So let's talk about some other trees. Here's another excellent white oak. This is the swamp white oak. It's uh, pretty easy to tell by the leaves. Now, <clears throat> out of all the white oak species, this is probably one of the most preferred white oaks because of their acorns. They do have large acorns. They're about three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half long. And the deer prefer swamp white oak acorns. So if you can find these, you usually find them in some bottom lands. Um, it's an excellent tree and the deer prefer uh, acorns from this tree. So especially in, in uh, early September to uh, mid October, they're gonna be producing heavy amounts of acorns. So definitely look for these types of trees and going to have some success in the deer woods. So I'm back out here at the park. I just want to show you a couple different trees to also look out for in the white oak species. Uh, this is the white oak and the swamp white oak. So uh, big difference between the two. Your white oak acorns are going to look pretty standard, about uh, half inch to three quarters of an inch. And uh, the swamp white oak acorns are uh, typically three quarters of an inch to an inch and a half long. So a uh, big way to tell the difference between the two types of trees are the leaves. And um, if you look at a, a regular oak, a white oak leaf, it's gonna have uh, rounded lobes throughout the leaf. And if you look at a swamp white oak, it's gonna have rounded lobes initially and then start out to um, more of a, uh, a merged leaflet on the end so something to keep a lookout for when you're out in the woods so behind me is another white oak species this is a chinkapin and i can tell it's a chinkapin just based off of the leaves and also the acorns and if you notice the bark on the tree it looks a lot like your typical white oaks it has that gray scaly bark and the leaves are really easy to identify because it has almost uh, a bristled lobe. So you would guess just looking at it, it would probably be a red oak, but it's actually a white oak. There's three tree types that look very similar uh, with their leaves. That's the swamp chestnut oak, 
the chestnut oak, and the chinka pen. Now, the first two on that list, I'll show you examples of those, but uh, it's pretty easy to tell the difference between a chinka pen and the other two types of chestnut oaks just based off of the acorns and the bristled lobes. So if you look at it closely at that, it does look like they're pointed on each side, and that's a pretty easy giveaway for the chinka pen oak. And that's what the acorns look like. They're brown, <clears throat> usually about quarter to a half inch in size. And I'll show you some more examples of those and do a comparison of at least two of these tree types, these white oaks, uh, later. So another really good white oak to look out for in the hunting woods is a swamp chestnut oak. And these oaks are part of the white oak species. And they have a very large acorn. I've actually gathered some of these last year and planted several over the spring. You know, with your white oaks, they're gonna sprout in the fall. And your red oaks, you can uh, put them in some wet peat moss and, uh, you know, save them over winter, go through a stratification process and plant them in the spring. So just looking at <clears throat> a handful of these, you can tell they're a very large acorn. Some of them are over an inch uh, when they first drop. They're going to be, you know, yellow with some shades of uh, red and green uh, in the acorns when they first fall to the ground. But after a week or so of sitting there, they're going to turn dark brown, and these are going to start sprouting a little tap root. Uh, if you look at the leaves on the swamp chestnut oak, it has robed leaves like most white oaks, and the, the caps for the acorns are pretty large caps. Um, they cover a little bit over a third of the acorn before they fall. And when the acorns fall out, they typically fall you know, straight to the ground and lose the cap. So a uh, very attractive acorn for deer and turkey. Um, it's a very large acorn. If you ever watch deer try to eat these, uh, it's, it's a mouthful. So definitely keep out, an eye out for these in the, in the woods when you're hunting. Um, these are great uh, trees to plant on your home farm, on your private ground. They put out a lot of acorns. I've noticed these trees produce heavy every year. So definitely keep a lookout for these. Another oak to look out for is red oaks. Now, the biggest difference between a white oak and a red oak is gonna be the leaves and also the tannin levels in the acorn. So when you look at a red oak, it's going to have pointed bristles on each individual lobe. And this is a pin oak. And pin oaks are pretty common here in Indiana. Uh, I see them all over the woods. Uh, they get pretty tall. They drop a lot of acorns every single year. Now, some of the red oaks don't produce like that, but pin oaks, I've noticed, uh, tend to produce pretty heavy every year. And the acorns are fairly small, but they do have high tannin levels, so the deer don't prefer to eat them first. They'll definitely key in on the, your white oak acorns um, early on in the season. And after the rain and snow has washed some of the tannin levels off the acorns, uh, they'll start hitting those red oak acorns. <clears throat> now, pin oak, it looks very similar to a couple of other different red oaks, uh, scarlet oak and shumard oak. So when you look at a pin oak in the fall, if the leaves are brown, it's a good chance it's a pin oak. If they're red, uh, it's a good chance it's a scarlet oak. But uh, just uh, notice when you look at these trees, uh, look at the ground, and if you find some small acorns, um, and you notice that the uh, leaves that have bristled lobes, there's a good chance it's probably a pin oak, at least here in Indiana. So let's talk about some other trees. I'll mosey on down through the park and see what else we can find. So this little tree behind me is a shumard oak, and it's also part of the red oak species. So. Um, it's very similar to your pin oaks, your black oaks, your scarlet oaks. They all have a very similar leaf pattern, and it's really hard to tell the difference between all of them. But just know they're all red oaks, and they all, um, you know, as far as food value is concerned, they're going to be higher in tannins than your white oaks. So your deer aren't going to prefer these types of acorns until later in the season when there's no more white oak acorns left to eat. So just keep that in mind. Um, I do have um, a lot of different red oaks on my farm, but uh, I primarily just have shingle oak and pin oak are the two main 
species I tend to find out in uh, southern Indiana. So this tree behind me is another red oak. This is a shingle oak and it's pretty easy to identify just based off of the leaves. Um, a lot of individual elongated uh, single lobe leaves and they're all kind of on like one big leaflet that appears to um, just kind of form along the branches. But uh, this tree is very prevalent in southern Indiana, at least where I have uh, you know my own farm ground. Uh, these are all over the place and they drop a lot of acorns. They're all very small acorns with a lot of high tannins, just like a pin oak. But uh, I've seen a lot of squirrels eat them and the deer will definitely eat them later in the year when it starts to cool off and all the white oak acorns are starting to disappear. So definitely keep an eye out for the shingle oak. Another great red oak to look out for is the northern red oak. So you can tell it's a northern red just by the size of the leaves. Um, you can tell it's a red oak by the bristled tips, the bristled lobes. So you automatically know it's not a white oak just because of the bristled lobes. Um, I've actually planted several of these out on my farm. Uh, they do produce a lot of big acorns and they produce them seems to be every year. Um, it's an excellent uh, food source for deer, but uh, just keep in mind they do have a high tannin, so deer are only gonna prefer those later in the season. So here's another tree you need to look out for in the deer woods this fall, uh, particularly in the winter time frame, uh, because this tree behind me is a honey locust and they're really easy to identify. It's gonna have these spikes on the bark of the tree and this is a protective mechanism to uh, ward out any pests um, that are trying to eat the tree, especially when they're young. But the really easy way to identify them is going to have these large seed pods. And these are going to drop in the fall. Uh, the deer really aren't going to pay much attention to them until it gets colder. All the food plots, all your corn, your beans are gone. Um, and then, especially when it snows out, uh, you'll find deer will hit these up really hard when it snows. They'll dig down deep and find these seed pods and they'll eat all the individual seeds out of each one of these pods. So I found that the honey locusts tend to grow a lot in clusters. If you find them on some field edges, those are really good spots to key in on uh, because they tend to produce a lot of seed pods when they have enough canopy. So behind me, this is a pawpaw tree. This is what the leaves look like. Now it produces fruit uh, that is banana-like tasting. Uh, they're kind of about the size of a uh, small banana and they um, typically once this tree is bigger uh, these will get the fruit will get a lot bigger um, about the half the size of your hand um, some can be pretty large but uh, about the shape of a potato really and <clears throat> you know this tree produces fruit in late uh, summer, early fall. It's the middle of October right now, so all the fruit that's dropped is already uh, beyond ripened. And this is kind of what they look like, and this is what the seeds look like. So here's another tree that you should look out for this fall. This is Osage Orange, and it's not a preferred food source for deer. As you can see behind me, this tree, it's got pretty gnarly bark, long vertical veins going down the tree. But the easiest way to identify it is the fruit that it actually drops. They look like little brains, and um, I've seen deer eat these before. Like I said, it's not a preferred food source, but if it's the only thing in the area, uh, deer will munch on them. Usually they'll eat one and kind of move on, but it looks like some kind of animal's been chewing on that one already, probably a deer. So if you see these and it's the only food source around, especially late season, uh, I have seen deer eat these. So uh, it's a good tree to look out for to kind of key in on where maybe some deer activity is going to be on some uh, field edges, fence rows, and this is the only thing dropping any kind of edible fruit. So these trees behind me are American beech trees. So looking at the leaves, this is what they look like. And they also have uh, beech nuts, which are very undervalued food resource for deer. Uh, they contain about 20% protein, 50% fat. So uh, if you have some beech trees in your woods, just know that these beech nuts are going to be a high commodity uh, for deer uh, this fall. So definitely look out for these trees. Deer love them and uh, they're an excellent food source for whitetails. So I want to show you a really good example of a persimmon tree that's just loaded and what the bark looks like. So as you can see, 
this persimmon tree is just absolutely loaded. It still has all its leaves and it is just loaded with fruit. So um, this would be a really good one to pull some seeds from and try to plant your own. So very typical, the bark on a persimmon tree, it's gonna have these individual blocks. And as it gets older, it gets a lot darker. Um, so very large persimmons on this tree and you can look at the ground it's just loaded it'd be a really good spot if this was on your field edge and you were uh, able to deer hunt over this but it's just on the side of the road um not a really tall tree I'd say it's maybe 10 15 years old but man does it produce a lot of persimmons well, anyway, we'll save some leaves from these and and then later we'll do a tree identification with um, Some of the trees that we went over just to kind of give you a better idea of what to look out for All right, so we're gonna do a recap of a lot of the trees that we discussed. I'm gonna start with the the oak species so uh, I've got red and white oaks laid out on the table here So we'll just start from one end and talk about some of the oaks that we went over so these are all white oaks that I'm initially going to talk about, and then I'll also talk about the red oaks. So this is a chinkapin oak. As I mentioned, it's one of the white oaks that uh, you would typically distinguish as a red oak just based off of the pattern of the leaves. It does have some sharp, jagged edges. And just looking at it at first glance, you would think this is a red oak, but it's actually a white oak and the leaves are pretty easily to distinguish. Um, this is what the acorns look like. They're typically about under a half an inch long and they're very dark brown, small acorns. This is a bur oak, the largest leaves of any white oak species. As you can see, uh, very large leaves and they're gonna have that typical characteristics of a white oak you're going to have the smooth lobes and um, the acorns are the largest acorns of the white oak species. And this is just a, a pretty typical example. They're going to have a cap that covers a majority of, if not more than half of the acorn. Sometimes they cover um, about 75% of the acorn. I've got a lot, a lot of larger examples. Last year I actually took... A majority of the burr oaks that I found took all the caps off and I was hoping to plant some of them this year didn't get around to it but uh, I've got some very large burr oak acorns in a sack in my in my bar room but uh, another one we're going to talk about is the swamp chestnut oak so this looks very similar to three different types of white oaks it looks very similar to the chinka pen the swamp chestnut is also very similar to the uh, chestnut oak, which is also called a mountain oak, and that typically grows in the Appalachian Mountains. Um, so these three trees are going to look very similar as far as the leaf patterns. Now, the acorns with your swamp chestnut oaks are very large acorns. As you can see, all the white oaks will actually germinate in the fall. I've had these in a sack for a couple weeks and they've started to germinate, and I've actually planted quite a few, a few of these in the past, and they do pretty well, uh, you know, planting them over winter. If you have a, a heat source, you can, you know, grow them over winter and plant them in the spring, uh, which is what I typically do. So majority of these in a sack have germinated, but they do have pretty large acorns. When they first drop in the fall, they're gonna be yellow, green, and have some red shading on the acorns, but once they sit there for a week or two, they're gonna turn dark brown and look very similar to a lot of the other white ac oak acorns. As far as the caps are concerned on the swamp chestnut oaks, as you can see, it's a very large cap. Uh, but it typically covers at least a quarter to a half of the acorn. And it's very characteristic of most white oaks. They have a lot of uh, raised bumps or edges on the caps. And if you look at a red oak, for example, um, this is a red oak, uh, a lot different as far as the caps are concerned. 
So we'll talk about some other characteristics between red and white oaks. And this is your typical white oak that you're gonna find in most of your park settings or even in the woods, Corcus alba. And this is what the acorns look like. The caps aren't gonna cover near as much of the acorn as some of the other white oaks, but uh, very large acorns for the, the white oaks. And some of them will start to turn some different shades in the fall. But all your oak species are typically going to hold their leaves well into the winter. I mean, one of the last trees to drop, drop their leaves. Now let's move on over to some of the red oaks that we talked about. So this is a northern red oak. As you can tell, it's got a very large leaf, very e easy to distinguish from other red oaks. The acorns are actually very large as well. Uh, they're usually about the size of a white oak acorn. Uh, they're pretty easy to tell once they've been sitting there. They start to get like a, a light gray uh, or almost a, a white hue on the acorns after they've sit on the ground for any amount of time. So the difference between the white oaks and the red oaks in terms of the acorns is the white oaks will germinate in the fall and the red oaks are going to need a period of stratification. So if you want to grow these on your own, I've done it on my own. What I'll typically do is put them in some wet peat moss or some soil. It doesn't have to be soaking wet, just damp enough to uh, leave some moisture content in the bag. Um, just put them in a Ziploc, throw them in your garage or somewhere cold where they're going to get that uh, three to four months of stratification in order to germinate your red oak acorns. So as I mentioned with the white oaks, they're going to start to sprout and germinate in the fall as soon as they drop and you put them in a sack and they're just automatically going to start germinating. So you can actually start growing those in the fall if you want. Well, let's talk about some other red oaks. So this is the black oak. So there's four different types of red oaks that look very similar, at least in my opinion. So this, the black oak, this is one example. Uh, the pin oak, this is what the leaves look like on a pin oak. Shumard oak. And also the scarlet oak. So the scarlet oak is pretty easy to tell in the fall uh, just by the color of the leaves. Scarlet oaks are going to turn bright red. And your pin oaks, shumard oaks, they're going to turn brown. Black oaks will eventually turn brown as well, but I just picked these right off the tree. And uh, they're very, any of the red oaks are very easy to tell apart from all the white oaks just because of the bristled tips on each one of the lobes. So that's a common characteristic from the, the red oaks and then the white oaks, like I mentioned, they're going to have those smooth uh, edges on each one of the lobes. So that's the, the easiest way to tell those trees apart. So another one I wanted to talk about that uh, doesn't often get much mention is the shingle oak. The shingle oak and the pin oak are two of the red oak species that grow very heavily out in southern Indiana where I'm from. I've got a ton of these on my farm and they drop, like I mentioned earlier, acorns every single year. Uh, they aren't very large acorns, but they are very plentiful and the turkeys love them. The deer will definitely eat them. Um, squirrels love them, all your small game. And the majority of your shingle oak and pin oaks are gonna drop very small acorns like this. That's what the time they're gonna look like. There's not much to them, but they make up for it in quantity over quality so that is a majority of the red and white oak species you're going to find in the midwest some of these range into some other areas of the country but these are pretty typical common trees that i find out in the woods excellent food sources for the majority of wildlife to include all your small game um, your turkeys and your deer and when i'm looking for these trees i'm always looking for the white oaks in early um, early fall and after all the white oak acorns are gone the, the deer and the squirrels and everything has, has ate all the acorns um, after the deer and squirrel have ate all these individual acorns from the white oaks i'm going to be looking for you know trees that are producing um, other acorns from the red oak family a white oak tastes a lot like a macadamia nut so if you bite into one 
Um, you'll just notice they're kind of sweet, almost like a macadamia nut. And then the red oaks are going to be really bitter, uh, just based off of the, the high tannin level content. So something to look out for if you're just curious. You can't distinguish between, you know, the leaves, um, which are pretty easy to tell apart. But if you just see some acorns on the ground, you're not sure what kind of tree it is, bite into it and you're going to be able to tell immediately if it's really bitter, it's going to be a red oak. And if it tastes almost sweet like a macadamia nut, it's probably a white oak. One of the white oaks I didn't mention is the swamp white oak. Now it's different than the swamp chestnut oaks. Um, both of them will have large acorns. I would say these two right here uh, and then Quercus alba, the white oaks, are probably my favorite to plant. They just produce a lot of acorns every year. Like I mentioned earlier, the white oaks do drop every year, but they tend to have a better uh, producing season every third year. And then your red oaks will produce every other year. But I've noticed that certain red oaks tend to produce every single year, like your uh, pin oaks and your shingle oaks. I have never noticed any of those trees not producing every single year, but some of them, um, some of the red oaks do take, you know, another, do have an off season and they'll take a, a full uh, 24 months before they'll produce acorns again. So that's just some small differences and characteristics between the oaks. So next we're gonna talk about all the other uh, tree species we went over that are not oaks. So we're going to talk about all the other trees that we didn't mention earlier when we were talking about the oaks. Uh, we're just going to do a recap of all the other tree species. So this is the American beech tree. This is what the leaves look like. Let's zoom in on that camera there. They're all oval shaped and they do have spikes at, at the end of each one of, as you can see that in the camera. So that's a pretty common characteristic to be able to identify a beech tree. But the main thing I look for to beech trees are the bark. They're very smooth. A lot of times you see them in state parks or in a forest somewhere. Uh, people carve their names into them. The bark is really easy to cut into and uh, just really smooth bark. So another thing I look for finding beech trees is if you look at the, the ground underneath a beech tree, a lot of times you'll find the beech husks and that's what they look like and you'll find the beech nuts if i can uh, grab one they're very small less than a quarter inch in size but the deer love these they have a lot of protein and carbohydrates another tree we talked about was the american persimmon got a lot of these down on my farm this is what they look like very easy to distinguish in the fall they're going to turn bright orange uh, the leaves are also oval shaped and i wouldn't pay too much attention about the leaves uh, when I usually try to distinguish persimmon trees from other trees, I look at the bark and also if you're looking at it in the fall, you're going to see persimmons on all the female persimmon trees. Uh, that's one thing if you do try to plant some persimmons um, at home, if you don't have any, uh, you're going to run into that. Uh, you plant a lot that might be males, so plant a bunch of persimmons and eventually you'll get some, some female persimmons. And they're going to be the types of trees that actually produce the fruit. So uh, your, your males are going to uh, act or aid in the production or pollination of the female uh, persimmon trees. So you don't need as many of the males around as you would think. So I would, if you plant a bunch and the majority of them end up being males, you know, cut a bunch out, um, replant uh, for female. So they start producing pretty young. I've seen them six seven feet tall maybe eight foot tall already starting to produce persimmons and when they get a little older you'll notice in the bark it's going to be uh, look very like individual blocks on a tree and it'll start to really start to get dark after they age a little while and uh, they become very chunky and have a lot of individual blocks on the bark so that's what i look for when i'm trying to find persimmons if it's not fall and they don't actually have fruit on the trees I got a really good one in, in one of my micro plots that, uh, you know, is the only tree I left there. And so I think it's going to start uh, producing a lot more fruit now that the canopy is open. Another tree we talked about was the pawpaw tree. Now, this one's great for early season if you have some of these or if you plant some on your food plots. Uh, it's This type of tree does like uh, growing in, it's very shade tolerant, so it'll grow under a lot of other trees. 
Um, it's not a very big tree. And if you see these out in the wild, they're kind of hard to distinguish from some other trees if, you're not, if you don't know what to look for. Uh, the leaves are very long, uh, elongated, oval shaped. And the fruit typically looks, it's about the shape of a potato, um, sometimes a little bit elongated, more like a banana. But uh, they're gonna be green when they're not ripened and they'll start to turn <clears throat> uh, yellow and the fruit is gonna taste very similar to a banana. They do have a lot of seeds in them. But the deer love them. A lot of other you know, creatures in the forest love them. So definitely look out for pawpaw trees or try to grow some. Save some seeds in the fall, which is what I'm doing. I'll put them through some stratification, just like the persimmon seeds that I saved. And we'll try to grow some of those next spring after they've sprouted. And the other tree that I talked about that I didn't really go too much into detail in terms of the actual leaves or bark on the tree was the Osage orange. And all you really have to look out for is the fruit that it produces. Very easy to distinguish from a lot of other uh, types of trees that produce fruit. Uh, they do look a lot similar to a brain and they'll drop a large amount of these and you can pretty much tell right away that it's an Osage orange. Now deer will eat these. Like I said, it's not a common food source. So uh, you'll find these on the hedges uh, or fence rows a lot of times. Um, it just kind of grows out in the middle of nowhere a lot of times when I find it. But uh, the deer will definitely eat these. I've seen deer eat them. And it's like, not a preferred food source. The last tree that we talked about was the locust tree. Or in this example, we talked about the honey locust. And the way you can identify a honey locust is by the barbs that grow on the tree. Yeah, or the spikes. Uh, Native Americans used to use those as needles to sew some of their clothing together. Or spears and some of their spear tips. They're very sharp. You can actually use them for fishing hooks as well. So you need to look out for the bean pods. And particularly with this fruit um, or legume, you need to look out for uh, the bean pods in the fall. Uh, when it starts to cool off in the winter time when it's snowing a lot the deer are really going to key in on on the honey locust pods or the locust pods so this is what the leaves look like in the honey locust and all locust trees look very similar um, so that's a recap of all the non-tree species i hope you enjoyed this and i hope you learned something from it uh, please leave a, a comment in the box below subscribe if you haven't already and we'll keep putting out uh, more content on the channel uh, a lot of new content to add as deer season is november 2nd so hoping to get out there and get a big buck this uh, fall on my farm might do some uh, military refuge hunting i uh, might actually go over to illinois and do an out-of-state hunt this year so keep a close eye on the channel we'll get some more content out here shortly thanks for watching and stay tuned for next time